you like this video, remember to subscribe and like. Guitar Collector Guy presents buying a used USA Fender Strat for less than $1,000 on eBay. I'm always amazed how many of my friends tell me that they have never bought or sold anything on eBay. Granted, for guitars and musical instruments, there is reverb, but I'll cover that in a later video. For this project, I decided to take $1,000 and see if I could find a really good USA or American-made Fender Stratocaster on eBay and purchase from a buyer who was safe and reputable. It's easy on eBay to just kind of drill down and find pretty much exactly what you're looking for. I decided to go by category and brand. At this point on the screen, it's going to be pretty much showing me every single type of a Fender guitar, no matter where it's manufactured and no matter the country that's selling it. I ended up choosing the United States as the region of manufacture. I chose the series of a Fender Stratocaster. And then I wanted to buy within the U.S. for this because I didn't want to have to deal with overseas shipping. I quickly found um, an American-made Triburst Stratocaster, uh, made in 2014, 995 bucks. All the pictures and so on um, showed a really, really nice, clean guitar. It's got a rosewood neck, which is my preference, and it looked like somebody took a newer model Strat Electronics and actually installed them and did a lot of shielding inside the cavity, which is pretty cool. And looking at the frets, there's virtually no wear on the frets at all. Authenticate the guitar. I took the serial number and went over to Fender has this new serial number search, which will actually pull back um, all the information about the guitar. And it actually came back exactly as what they said that it was, other than it's a 2015. I had also looked at another guitar. It was an antique olive Fender Stratocaster, but the seller had zero feedback. And when I actually ran Google search on the images in the ad, I actually found them all over the internet. And so I thought that I had a scammer. And also too, the price was about $400 less than what that guitar would go for on the market. Market at this time for that guitar was about $1,800, and this one was $1,400. I wanted to confirm my suspicions, so I sent him an email asking for new photos that I could look to see if we're on the internet that had a date and timestamp that corresponded to now. He, the first thing he did was he asked me for a private email or phone number that he would text them to, which I immediately, that was a huge indicator that he was a scammer. Ironically, a few days later, I ended up getting an email from him through eBay and he had posted out more and it turns out that he was selling it for a family member who had died, which still sounds kind of suspicious, but the photos actually did jive and had, you know, date and timestamps on it, but you still, I wouldn't buy from him and you really have to be careful when you're out there to make sure that you're buying from a reputable um, individual or a company that's selling. Going back to the Triburst Stratocaster, I liked what I saw. I liked the price and the condition, so I decided to go ahead and buy it. But I didn't want to pay what they were posting. So I went ahead and sent them an offer for $925 and was sent. And then, you know, a couple hours later, I get an email saying that they had accepted my offer, which goes to show you that you don't always have to pay what you're basically um, the posted price, you know, as long as you give a respectful and reasonable offer more times than not, they'll probably go ahead and accept it. I was going to ask the UPS guy if I could film him walking the guitar up to the house, but I was actually working, but I did catch it on my ring camera and I did ask his permission and he was cool with it. So here's the guitar being delivered and I was very excited. The most exciting part of every guitar purchase is the unboxing. Um, ran it out to the garage, opened it up, pulled it out of the box, um, and started looking at it on the bench, uh, both sides, and found that um, it fairly matched uh, pretty much what was um, 
posted um, in the ad on uh, eBay. There were some play marks on the back, as they had said. Um, the frets were awesome. So I started to do the things to make the guitar basically mine. So I removed the trem cover and I wanted to remove the strings and basically do pretty much a full setup on this guitar. Um, I didn't like the bridge that it was flat um, and, you know, was not basically floating at all. And you can actually see the only way that you'd be able to remove the old strings is to actually um, pull the trim cover off the back and um, um, remove them uh, that way because the holes weren't even visible uh, in the trim cover. So I went ahead and um, put it on the bench, started to remove um, all the strings, cut them off. So I intended to remove the springs, basically adjust the trim claw and also um, adjust the six screws on the um, the bridge. So I went ahead and removed the springs and then um, pulled uh, the rest of the strings out of the guitar. So I'm not a big fan of the standard um, tuners that come on an American standard, American Pro type of Telecaster or Stratocaster. And so I had a set of locking tuners from Fender that I intended to go ahead and install. So I went ahead and removed the existing tuners that were on the guitar and basically just quickly installed the new locking tuners, which are, I gotta tell you, heaven when it comes to doing string changes. So the standard uh, tuners on a guitar like this, basically, if you pull the tuner off the back, it has two little um, pegs that go into holes in the back that keep it stabilized. Um, the Fender locking tuners also have those. There's now a set of vintage tuners that are coming out with a slot, which I also love because they're pretty much identical just using locking tuners in my opinion. They also now will fit in this type of guitar without modification with the two little posts going in. Um, keep an eye out. I'm going to do a video that compares um, these three different sets of tuners and how you basically string a guitar for each of them and showing the comparison between all of them. There's two different types of the Fender locking tuners. Um, there's one that has uh, two different heights of the post and that's what I have here. There's a tall post for the low, three low strings, our bass strings, and then there's a shorter post for the three treble strings. And you'll see in a minute, I'm gonna show um, a video of the side and you can actually see the difference between them. So the next thing was the bridge screws were flush with the face of the body of the guitar. And so I basically backed them off, all six of them, and then I tightened them to where they were just um, sitting a little bit above and there's still movement. Then the two outside, I loosened by about a half a turn and then about three quarters to a full turn on the center four screws. And it gave me pretty much the play on the bridge that I need um, for having a floating bridge. So the next thing I did was install the trim springs on the back of the guitar. Um, I decided with this to, I had loosened or well, the screws for the trim claw um, a little too much. So I tightened them in just enough where I thought on my other guitars um, they usually would be, um, that I've done setups for floating. And then I put the three um, trim um, springs back in and I, instead of like in other videos where I've done them at angles, I decided to do these um, three straight. So now I was installing a set of tens um, 
on and uh, Ernie Bull, um, Super Slinkies, and um, really nice strings. It's what I use on all my guitars. And um, just basically put all six in and then um, was going to go ahead and string them through the new um, locking tuning pegs. With the fender locking tuning pegs, there's a wheel on the back that you loosen up and then you're able to slide uh, the strings through. Um, if I'm holding the neck upward, I like to have the holes uh, aiming from about, I would say five o'clock to 11 o'clock on the clock. So it's easier for me to put my strings in. And unlike the traditional um, tuners that come on a fender guitar, you don't have to really have um, wrap on the string. So you go ahead and put them through, tighten on the back, um, just, you know, hand tight, not ridiculously tight. Then I bend uh, the excess string up and cut it off at the top of, so I don't have, you know, all of these strings dangling off of the head. And now I'm getting ready to go ahead and tune her up for the first time. Also too, um, I'm doing, you can see here, a really good stretch on all the strings. And I've talked about this before in other videos where, you know, if you don't do this, you're definitely gonna have issues with the guitar staying in tune because it's eventually gonna stretch it out anyways, but it'll just take longer. This way um, is just much better. And so I just kind of go up and down each of the strings, kind of putting upward pressure pulling on it and so on. So now I'm getting ready to go ahead and tune. And um, so to set up things like um, the string height, um, to also check the gauge of the um, truss rod, um, as well as setting up other things on the guitar, it's really, really important to basically tune the guitar really accurately, not flat, not sharp, pretty much spot on E, A, D, G, B, uh, E, and you know, just basically um, get it ready so you can start doing your measurements to see if everything is set up properly. Measure the truss rod gap. Um, I use the Music Nomad uh, truss rod gauge. Uh, it's really simple to use, instructions right on it. Um, and it comes in measurements for the classical guitar, acoustic bass guitar, and electric guitar. The electric guitar is set at 0 0.006 or 0.15 millimeters. And it's really simple to use. You basically put a capo on the first fret. It comes with this pick capo thing, but I actually prefer using a regular capo and then you depress the very last fret and you only have to check one string. So you basically, you can see here, I'm depressing the last fret and I'm putting the gauge in at the six and I'm just kind of going around and checking. And what was great about this neck was it was spot on and I literally didn't have to adjust anything at all, which was really, really great. Measuring the trim gap, basically the rear of the bridge um, to the face of the guitar is what you're measuring, the gap. And mine was right where it was supposed to be. Uh, it was at one eighth of an inch. Next, I wanted to measure the string height. Um, I also used another product from Music Nomad. It's their string gauge. Um, I use the low medium 1.50 and 1.25 settings. So um, 1.50 for the three bass strings that's basically the bottom of the string to the top of the fret. And that measurement is taken at the 12th fret. So I had to do adjustments, some just some final adjustments. I had already kind of tweaked what I thought they would be at just by eye, but then I really dialed them in now. So the string height for each of the saddles was perfect. And then I would recheck my work. So finally, um, all six of the strings were spot on perfect 
and I was good to go next to checking out intonation on the guitar. Next, I was going to measure the intonation on my new Stratocaster. Um, basically, that's with the guitar in perfect tune. Um, testing also the tuning at the 12th fret for each of the strings. And it should be spot on, not sharp, not flat, just like the open string. If it is um, flat, then you basically will move the saddle forward if it's sharp, you move the saddle back. And in this case, on the low E string, it was flat. And so I was going ahead and moving the saddle forward until it stopped moving on the tuner and was spot on in tune, um, just like the open string. And so I did this with each of the strings as I was going along. Luckily, um, uh, me setting it up by eyesight and comparing to another strat that I had, um, I was actually pretty much spot on. I was really surprised how accurate it was. So the guitar was set up perfectly for me. And so I turned it over and started basically putting on the um, trim cover with the six screws. Um, very, very happy um, with everything that I found going through and testing and doing setup on the guitar. So final conclusions. Do I think that I got a pretty good deal? Yeah, I actually do. I think I got a really good deal. Um, the guitar was almost set up. Um, I customized the guitar a little bit by putting on locking tuners, but that's just a preference. I didn't have to do that. Um, the neck and everything on this guitar is just wonderful. It's like a brand new guitar. So paying $950 plus or $925 plus tax and shipping to me, um, I think that I got a really good deal. I mean, there's a little bit of wear on the back of the guitar. The electronics are rock solid. The guitar plays beautifully, beautifully. So overall, I'd have to say I am really, really happy with this, and I would recommend doing the same thing. Just, you know, make sure you buy from reputable sellers, um, ask a lot of questions, and don't be afraid to offer a little bit different price than what they have uh, listed. Another thing I like to do is I will watch um, auctions and a lot of times um, people will uh, not bid on guitars and quite honestly, you can actually buy them for the initial bid. So I've bought, you know, American Telecasters and Stratocasters for $875, $900. They're just in ph phenomenal condition. I will admit, though, that over the years, I have bought some guitars online that were not as promised. You know, I bought a Stratocaster that the guy had filled holes with wood putty, and then he decided to install new tuners on the headstock and had actually drilled screws into the headstock without drilling pilot holes. And he never bothered to tell me that there was a huge crack through the headstock. So I've, I've bought guitars that I had to replace all of the electronics, um, you know, and, and so on. But for the most part, most of the guitars I've bought, I'm really happy with. 
and have had a good experience um, and have actually with some of the sellers, um, you know, made friends with them. So um, good luck with your adventure. I hope that this helps a little bit and, um, you know, feel free to ask questions and so on. And I'll try to answer as best I can. Thank you for going on this adventure with me, and I hope you come back for others. Also, thank you for watching this video. I really like sharing with you. Thank you. If you like this video, remember to subscribe and like.